Men and women traveling west across North America had to battle with severe weather and tough terrain, making it difficult to locate a spot to bathe. With a trip to new areas came the constant search for clean water, which may be of critical importance. In severe circumstances, survival sometimes surpassed care for hygiene. Living in close quarters, days or weeks without a bath, and a lack of sufficient bathroom facilities all led to a life in the Wild West marked by unpleasant odors, frequent sickness, and a generally wretched lifestyle. Hygiene in the American Wild West was probably about what you'd expect, unhygienic. In this video, we will discuss some shocking facts about hygiene in the Wild West. But before proceeding to the video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you never miss any video from Roots. Even a minor scratch could be deadly. Before the widespread use of antiseptics, life on the path might be dangerous if even the simplest thing went wrong. Because of the unhygienic living conditions among the settlers, even minor wounds or abrasions could, at best, result in skin infections and, at worst, major illnesses that could be fatal. The settlers, therefore, needed to exercise extra caution to keep themselves safe. Cholera is a difficult disease to get rid of, especially while hiking. The settlers' diseases devastated Native Americans. The immigrants carried ailments of their own with them, in addition to the new illnesses that beset them. Although diseases like measles, smallpox, and the flu were rampant among the newcomers, these illnesses were unknown to the native Native Americans. Consequently, the recently arrived illnesses decimated Native American communities, leading to a startling 90% decline in their population. Cholera and other diseases claimed many lives. In the 1800s, there was a high rate of disease-related mortality since clean water was only fit for drinking and not for luxury uses like laundry and dishwashing. Cholera was the deadliest sickness, however, many others might also be fatal. Large-scale cholera epidemics would kill thousands of Native Americans and settlers on the American frontier. Outhouses were home to odors and bugs. Outhouses were a feature of frontier life. However, some individuals relied on nature to relieve themselves. However, outhouses were erected near houses and homesteads for convenience and safety. A pit would be excavated and a wooden building would be built over it. When the hole was filled, it was simply closed over, and the wooden structure was placed over another, usually adjacent hole. The outhouse did not have a nice aroma, and people would frequently try to conceal it with lye or lime. Bugs were plentiful, notably flies and black widow spiders, which were known to attack people while they sat on a timber bench. Because toilet paper did not exist in its contemporary form, people had to make do with whatever they could find, which included leaves, corn cobs, and grass. Spitting was so prevalent, it had to be outlawed. Men spat tobacco into the floor in saloons across the western frontier, where spittoons and cuspiders flanked the front of the bar. Spit was covered in sawdust, but this became an issue when respiratory ailments such as pneumonia and TB spread. Sawdust was a breeding ground for diseases, and because saloons sometimes rented out floors to visitors, people slept in the muck. Some places attempted to outlaw excessive spitting in an attempt to reduce it. Spitting on train platforms and stations was prohibited and may result in a $500 fine, a year in prison, or both. Cholera and other diseases ran rampant. Disease was rampant in camps and towns throughout the American West because laundry, plumbing, and dishwashing were done in drinking water. Cholera was very common taking the lives of both Europeans and Native Americans. Thousands of Mormon migrants died as a result of cholera outbreaks in the 19th century, while the precise number will never be known. Cholera was one of several illnesses that wiped off enormous numbers of Native Americans, and Mormons saw it as a punishment from God and a test of faith. Disease outbreaks moved from overland paths to tribal populations and Indian nomads. Nonetheless, cholera did not kill as many Native Americans as smallpox. The absence of sickness at every step was regarded as a gift. There is no sickness in camp at all. It is marvelous how well we are, Sarah Raymond Herndon observed. Iowa continues in this manner. However, excellent health did not endure in at least 18 states and territories in 1873. Russian immigrants, according to Dr. G. B. Van Delsen of the Dakota Territory, introduced cholera to Yankton, the territory's capital. He described Russians as lower classes, filthy in persons and habits, but he had no idea that cholera was part of a much bigger pandemic. Hair care involved whiskey and castor oil. Frank Clifford bathed his hair with soapweed, although other shampoos were available. Whiskey had numerous functions in the Wild West, including disinfectant and pain reliever, but it was also used to wash hair, 
The shampoo, which contained castor oil and lavender, was washed with rainwater or water softened with borax. Women frequently curled their hair with hot pencils after a thorough brushing or combing. Cultural backgrounds influence hygiene practices. Archaeologists discovered a pair of tweezers near Deadwood, South Dakota, in 2005. The tool reflected the substantial Chinese community that lived and worked in Deadwood, as well as some of their everyday activities. The Chinese would never shave, said Don Ivey, the researcher who discovered the tweezers. They used to pluck their hair. Tweezers were also used to smoke opium, although this one appears to be for grooming. Fungal infections posed a huge problem. While on the path, it was not uncommon for individuals to go weeks or even months without showering. Fungal infections rapidly proved more of an issue than wildlife and robbers after spending day after day sitting and sweating on top of a horse, all while wearing the same clothing. These infections would induce burning sensations, generally beginning in extremely painful places, such as the feet and armpits, before spreading to the rest of the body owing to scratching with unclean hands. Beds could be full of seam squirrels. Beds in the American West were not always built of straw and hay, but many were. Because such bedding was not replaced frequently, lice and other creatures were infested. Lice, sometimes known as seam squirrels, were only one of the many insects that could make living in the Wild West less than pleasant. Flies got into food and human waste, while mosquitoes swarmed into inadequately insulated dwellings. Rose Pender, who visited the American West from 1883 to 1888, noted that when she went to sleep one night, bugs abounded, so I got very little rest. Because few people had window screens, bugs would go from homes to outhouses and return, leaving traces of whatever they'd picked up along the route. By this we come to the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed this video. If so then please like this video, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you never miss any videos from us. If you want to enjoy more videos on Wild West and many other interesting topics, then stay connected with us. Thanks for watching.